Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the Technology Firm, and today we're going to tackle the span versus tap issue. And I've read a lot of stuff about this in the past, and I thought I'd take a kick at the can. Um, and the big thing about this, I'm not going to read everything to you, like you know, like I usually do, I'll just skim through a few points. I did want to go through the typical argument of packet loss, because that's been documented quite well by many people. So I'm, I'm going to talk about something that I don't see documented a lot, and that's the latency issue, okay? Um, and we're going to compare tap versus span, or mirror port, whatever you want to call it. And the methodology is quite straightforward, so I want to go through this. Uh, 100,000 frames were generated by the OptiView to another OptiView, and if we needed a third one, then we'll use a third one as well. And this is a Fluke Networks OptiView XG, all right, for the people who want to know that. We chose to generate a 9% load on gig ethernet. And the reason why I chose 9% was because I want to prove to people you don't need 100% load to cause an issue. You can see the effects of this with just 9%. You'll also see that I used a um, packet size, a frame size of 700 and something. I can't remember the exact number right now. You'll see it in another slide. Uh, because I didn't want a full size packet and full load because some people say that's not realistic. And I want to show people a realistic test. I also chose the OptiView because it can capture the 10 nanosecond resolution and I use some packet slicing just so the trace file isn't huge because I got to bring it into, a, into Wireshark. The remaining trace file was filtered by the IP identifier uh, and that was interesting that the OptiView did not increment the IP identifier. It was the same number all the time which was fantastic for filtering so that was great. And then the trace file was converted into a CSV file using Wireshark and then the filter output delta time was graphed in Excel. All right, and just to cut to the chase, here's a summary. We had the back-to-back -back with 68 to 69 microseconds, and that was kind of cool, one microsecond latency. That's just two OptiViews with a piece of copper between them. Switch, 56 to 80, and that was that was an eye-opener, right? Just watching the difference between a piece of wire and an actual switch. Theoretically, we know it's going to be different, but it was kind of interesting to see by how much. Then we introduced the tap, which wasn't all that much different, and then the span port. So the conclusion of the test was to highlight that span port created more latency, and this is the key part. Uh, not just between the packets, but per packet, and I want to show you that in a graph. So I'm going to just zip through a couple of slides, and I'll make this available for you, and you can go get this, okay? So uh, this is kind of like my recipe list of all my ingredients, if you will. So this is the Fluke Networks OptiView XG tablet. I had a Cisco 3750 switch. I had this Garland copper tap, and I had a bunch of patch cables, okay? Pretty simple. There's my OptiView generation screen, and you can see that I'm not generating broadcast or multicast. I'm doing a unicast, which is important to understand. Just throwing out 100,000 packets with 557 byte frame size and a 9.11% utilization. So that is going to be a 6.82 second uh, generation, okay? It's not like an hour or something, it's just a couple of seconds. On the capture side, I did some packet slicing, 64 bytes, because I only really need the headers. And that really keeps the uh, trace file small for me. And there's the methodology, which which I've already gone through with you, so I'm not going to go through this. Um, and there's my back-to-back -back test, which is quite obvious. So I, I send from here to here, I capture from here to here, and I compare both of those trace files. And you can see they're solid, one microsecond variance, which is pretty well what you would hope. Then we move on to the next test. And this is where things get fun, because I'm generating from here to here. Uh, because this is just a regular switch, there's no mirror, there's no span, no nothing. This guy's not doing anything. He's just sitting there, right? So no traffic's going to go here. So same exercise. I capture when it leaves. I capture when it arrives, just like I did with a back-to-back -back test. And you can see, woo, kind of that wonky pattern, right? Please remember scale. This is microseconds. Don't freak out. This is kind of what you expect. And the range is 56-ish to 80 microseconds, right? And there you go. Next test. We're going to generate our traffic from here, and we have our tap port, monitor port, whatever you want to call it, and then our destination. So this time I'm doing something different. I'm going to compare his packets and his packets, both of the arrival side of it, okay? So I'm not comparing his. And you'll see the same pattern as before, but now you can see some orange tips. The orange is the extra latency added by the tap. There you go. Right? So uh, we can visually see the latency added by the tap. And now the range is 55 to 80 microseconds. Then we did our good old span port, right? Port monitoring, whatever you want to call it. We generate. There's a monitor port. There's a destination port. And I compared again the monitor and the destination trace files. And, and this is obviously some notes on the actual monitor ports for the people who want to see exactly how I did it. 
and there's the results. Now this is really interesting. Not only do we have our orange tips, which are much more, and they're higher, you'll also see some extra orange bits between them, and that means the latency between the packets are different, right? So not only do we have more delay or latency per packet when they arrive at the same time, but when they don't arrive, you'll see that there is a different delay there as well. There you go, folks. So uh, basically, in a nutshell, I'm just going to go back here again. Uh, in a nutshell, you'll see the back-to-back -back test, the switch, the tap, and the span port. So I was more concerned about documenting the latency side of it, not so much the packet loss side of it. So I hope that helps. Have a good day. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.